really low key fight, Matt, at 135 pounds. We have Tracy Cortez that a lot of people might be familiar with from her time on Dana White's Contender Series. She picked up a big win over Maria Agapova. A lot of people really down on Maria Agapova these days, but she'll bounce back. And Tracy Cortez, for what it's worth, she wins that fight on Contender Series. Very emotional moment for her, getting the call, getting the contract. Comes back out, takes on Vanessa Mello, and moves up to 135 pounds. So that's probably going to be your future home for Tracy Cortez. So we saw her look great in that fight against Vanessa Mello. Vanessa Mello. So that's, that's kind of where I'm going to leave it there. Now she's taking on a really tough out. And Stephanie Egger, who's coming in on short notice, replacing 2-0 Bia Malecki. Fortis MMA's own Bia Malecki. I mean, we saw her with Cheyenne Bays in her corner the last time she came out uh, over in uh, a big fight at 135 pounds, and she won that fight. Now, Malecki's out, Egger's in. What do we know about right, Stephanie Sega. Egger? I mean, Stephanie Egger, so far, black belt in judo that she earned many, many years ago. And if you look down through her total uh, record outside of the cage in MMA, because she's a late bloomer. I mean, 5'1 at 32 years of age. What has she really done, Craig? I mean, she's meddled and competed at, listen, you you pick the, the tournament for judo. She's been in it, and she's meddled in it. And since then, really rounded out her game. Blue belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Uh, she's an ADCC European champ. She competed at the 2019 ADCC World Championships. Lost in the finals to Gabby Garcia, who outweighs her by probably 100 pounds. And it went into overtime in that one. Lost so on points. No shame in that. You know that Stephanie Egger is good at the takedowns, good at jiu-jitsu. And don't just take my word for it. Go back and watch some of Stephanie Egger's fights. And the thing that I like before I let you go off, Matt, is the fact that Stephanie Egger does something that we actually saw, and this is a poor example, but it ties in at 135. Ronda Rousey was so good at throws above the waist. She could really just ragdoll her opponents around. Stephanie Egger, a lot taller and thinner than Rousey, but she's able to do a lot of the same things. Also, her striking quite good, and I know you're going to talk about one of her major wins, but her striking is very good. She can mix in the kick. She throws nice punches down the middle. She does leave herself susceptible. She will throw some wild looping shots, uh, but she can stick behind the nice jab. Apart from that, Stephanie Egger, well-rounded enough, but it's that judo and jiu-jitsu background that she has that I think matches up very well against Tracy Cortez. I fight. agree 100%. And we're not to take anything away from Tracy Cortez because she's a really well-rounded mixed martial artist. We saw that in the Agapova fight. We saw that in the Mello fight. And I thought the Mello fight was a really important one for her because, yes, Vanessa Mello is probably not the best MMA fighter you're ever going to find. But for Tracy Cortez to not only move up in weight, but to move up in weight and then fight someone who misses weight at the weight class that's above your natural one, if you will, uh, that was really impressive. And she just, Tracy Cortez has that Volkanovski kind of style of game where it's whatever you're going to do, I'm just going to do the opposite because I'm so well-rounded that I'm assuming whatever your weakness is, I'll at least be average at it. So I'll be better than you at it. And Cortez is good at using a wrestling. She's great at, we talk about this a lot too when you're comparing Egger to uh, Ronda Rousey, where in women's MMA, there is a lot of head and arm throws. She does a lot more, uh, a lot more important, I guess, than wrestling is in women's MMA. But when you look at Tracy Cortez, her wrestling style is the exact opposite of Eggers because she is going to go for the more traditional kind of double leg, single leg. Will work a lot in the clinch, and that's what kind of worries me in this fight because I think it's fair to say Tracy Cortez is the more well-rounded out of the two. She can wrestle, she could jiu-jitsu, she could at striking. There's not a massive weakness to her game. The issue, though, is... Can someone who is the smaller fighter use that skill advantage against someone who is more of a specialist who's a little bit bigger? I think in the clinch, which is where Cortez has a lot of her success, might be a bit of her downfall because Egger, and what I was going to bring up, when you go through Egger's uh, past record, and we do this a lot, well, not even a lot, we do this for every fighter, you look through the past record, kind of see the level of competition, a lot of people making their UFC debut have fought a lot of those O and O's, one and ones, O and ones. Egger fought semi decent talent in over at Rise, and you probably heard of the name King Reyna before. She beat her in one of her first fights, well, one of her first six MMA fights. So that's a really impressive thing to do when you go over there. Fight not only one of Ryzen's better fight, better women's fighters, but one of kind of the faces of their organization, or at least at the time. Put on an impressive performance. Her grappling is really good. And she is great at going for the throws and then going immediately into a submission. So she'll hit you with that arm throw. If you do leave an arm out, she'll attack that. If she can get to your back, she'll do the same. So stylistically, this is a really interesting matchup because it's going to come down to, will the size and strength of Egger kind of outweigh the skills of Cortez? And this is where I really like it because if you look at Tracy Cortez's record, again, she's fought really good competition as well. And like you said, very well-rounded. She's a much more technical striker with her boxing than you're going to see from Stephanie Egger 
with the long looping kind of shots. But again, if you look at it for Tracy Cortez, Monica Mendina, big win. Karen Cedillo, 1-0. Aaron Blanchfield, the split decision win at 3-0. Then you beat Agapova, that's a good win. Then you beat Vanessa Mello. For Edgar, and we had talked about it, I mean, you look at her debut was against Judith Ruiz, who at this point, 6-5, and five, she just made her Bellator debut in the last uh, calendar year. All right, but Judith Ruiz, pretty good name um, on the European scene. Then she beat Mara Romero Barella, who I get it, just got cut by the UFC, but still, that's really good competition to be taking on uh, on the regional scene, okay. especially in your second fight. First and second fight, you would mention the fight against Reyna, and this is where... To me, it gets very interesting. I think this fight stylistically matches up a lot like a fight that we had recently with a name that one of these fighters has faced, not in MMA, but has faced in the past. Stephanie Egger, when she was competing at ADCC, took on Yulia Stolyarenko back in the uh, 2019 World Championships. That's where I think Yulia Stolyarenko... A lot of people might have known her from The Ultimate Fighter when she came back after some fights away from the UFC and just... Off the cuff, they give her Yana Kunitskaya. I could see the fight between Stolyarenko Kunitskaya ending up similarly to Cortez and Egger, where Kunitskaya, what she did was just pressured and pressured the whole fight and kept Stolyarenko up against the cage. Stolyarenko had some spots where she was trying to fish for some things, wasn't really able to get it moving and going. Tracy Cortez fights a lot like that. A lot of pressure, a lot of cage presence. She can get the back, she can get on top. She's really, really physically stronger than a lot of her opponents. And I could see that happening in this one. Again, Stephanie Egger, she's, she's fought good competition. She has that pedigree. Training at a buddy gym over in Switzerland. So there's that. And then again, you have Tracy Cortez coming out of Fight Ready in Arizona. One of the premier gyms that we've seen really kind of spurt out of Arizona. And there's a lot. I mean, MMA Lab and so on and so forth. The list goes on there. Overall, I look at these odds. I'm a little perplexed, but I'm not. I mean, Tracy Cortez opened a minus 305 favorite. She's now a minus 255. If you look at Stephanie Egger, open a plus 255. Now a plus 205. You look over on Tapology, similar to our first fight between Tagir Ulambekov and Bruno Silva. At a 560 total votes, 91% going with Cortez, 89% predicting a decision. I think that's the safe pick. As much as we talked about the fighter on the right, I'm going with the fighter on the right here, Matt. I think Stephanie Egger is going to be able to get the win in this one. I think she's going to surprise a lot of people. Can I see a path to victory for Tracy Cortez? Well, of course I can. She's a blue chip prospect in the UFC. Six years younger with two more fights in her pro career for whatever that's worth. But I really like Stephanie Egger popping in on short notice. A much different test than B.M. Leckie. You're getting ready for B.M. Leckie. What are you getting ready for? The longest, rangiest striker, apart from maybe Penny Kanzad at 135 pounds in the UFC's ban women's bantamweight division. I think Stephanie Egger, while she is long like we talked about, poses totally different challenges for Tracy Cortez. And for those reasons... I think Stephanie Edgar is going to be able to get the win here. Okay, I think you laid out a really good argument, but I don't agree. I think Tracy Cortez is going to get the win, but I'm going to side with you on one thing. Because of the odds, I'd put money on Stephanie Edgar, even though I think Tracy Cortez is going to win. She's way too big of an underdog in this fight. For Tracy Cortez, who... I'm a big believer in you have to prove that you're a favorite. Not only that, okay my level of competition might be a little bit better than yours and now we're fighting you need to prove in the ufc with ufc caliber opponents unless you're like a michael chandler i'm not gonna i'm not gonna make him fight ufc <laughs> level guys um but with tracy cortez she hasn't proven to me that she deserves to be a two and a half almost three to one favorite over somebody yet so maybe if you were looking to put money down Egger's not a bad choice but i just see cortez is gonna be able to kind of outgrind her cortez it's just going to do the same thing. Rinse and repeat. Get into the clinch. Go to the cage. Mix it up. Go for a takedown. If I don't get it, go back to striking. She's going to make Egger work constantly, and she's not going to keep it in the same range throughout the fight. I think if it is very heavily in the clinch, Egger might be able to go for a throw, get a submission, but I'm going to say Cortez probably by submission. Matt? Or probably by decision. Goodness, sorry. That's my bad. We're going to disagree on the pick. You're going with Tracy Cortez. I'm going to go with the UFC debutante in Switzerland's own Stephanie Egger. I'm really looking forward okay. to this card. We got a great main event at Bantamweight between Marlon Moraes and a really tough out in Corey Sandhagen. So you're not going to want to miss that. You keep it locked in with Fight Name Picks, Matt, as we always say. Let's, Let's get, get into it. it.